Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 13, you guys. What a stupid, silly episode. That's why I didn't do my video yesterday. I was like, I am not even getting in my car for them heifers with that shit that they gave us last week. And thank goodness that we don't have a show this weekend because the Grammys are going to be on. So <clears throat> maybe they can revisit. Like this, it's just stupid. I'm actually looking over this season and it's been entertaining, but <sighs> okay, we're not starting it with some complaints, right? We halfway through the season. Actually, we are on the declining end of the season. So that means we only have six or seven episodes left. So that's not, <laughs> you know, that's not bad, actually. Time is going by really quickly. It's just been really trivial all this all this season. But anyway, you guys, the review. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so Eva. Eva's at home with her family, and they're, they're a good-looking family. Everybody kind of looks alike. Everybody's light skin, light eyes, you know. Her daughter is beautiful. Her daughter with Kevin McCall. You guys remember that... Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if he gave up his parental rights or, you know, yes, there's been so much going on there, but whatever it is, they have now decided, um, as far as the show was concerned, last week was um, that Michael Sterling was going to officially um, give her his last name. That's the first step to him adopting her. Well, she's tired. They just got back from their trip um, and what a trip it was. So, you know, she's just... Um, thankful that Michael has decided to, you know, bring her into the fold. He said he's been raising this little girl since she was 15 months old. So for all intents and purposes, that is his daughter. I had no idea that they were together that long. I was like, how old is she again? <laughs> um, the little girl should be about four-ish, somewhere in there. I had no idea that they had been together that long, but evidently they have. So, and she tells us that Kevin left her, the little girl, at two months. So, this is the only father that the little girl has known, and she looks at herself as a sterling. So, we might as well make it official. Okay, so on the actual day that they have to go to court to get this done, uh, she calls Cynthia, and she's nervous because she found out um, that on the day that they were going to this court proceeding that uh, Kevin was actually in Atlanta. He was in Buckhead as far as the social media was concerned. So she was concerned about it, but Cynthia was like, girl, don't even worry yourself about it. All right, I'm about to go out to eat with the girls, but you know, I'll have an extra drink for you. All right, this is gonna go well. So she picks up Michael um, and they head towards court. You know, again, she's emotional, she's nervous. She's telling them, you know, that she's worried about Kevin being around, but Michael's like, it's just a, this is just a routine court proceeding, nothing to be nervous about. It's going to all go well. Don't worry about it. Next scene, we see that they are done and the little girl is now officially um, Marley. I think it's Mar, is it Marley Ray? I don't, I don't know if I, why I'm trying to give her that middle name. It seemed like it was, but that might be somebody else's name that I'm thinking of. But it is Marley Sterling. And Eva's so happy, you know, and emotional again and crying and thanking Michael, you know, for um, just doing this. Turns out that Michael was once adopted. Okay, so um, not once adopted, like it, it goes back and forth. But he was an adopted child, so um, it was important to him. I guess in his family to accept this little girl in officially and, you know, so that she can be a part of the Sterling family, y'all. So it's done. It's a done deal. I was worried that Kevin was going to pull up on the side of the street. <laughs> I was watching. I was like, why y'all on the street? You know, this fool is out there, you know, but um, not that security would have let him do anything like that. But I still was just like worried. You just don't never know when somebody is kind of as unstable as she tells us and, you know, we sometimes see. So anyway, congratulations to the Sterling family. Let's jump over to the girls. So we have Candy and Marlo and T Tanya and Portia. They go to uh, Jeju Spa out here in Atlanta. I actually up in Gwinnett, Gwinnett County. Um, and we are going to do a round two. <clears throat> I hope they don't remember the last time we was here because that was a mess, okay? I forgot all about that scene, but that was when Nene and Kenya got into it there at the little lunch area. Um, and um, 
yeah, we're hoping that we can just get in and get out this time with not too much drama. Now, they're not there all day like they were before. It looks like they're just getting their feet massaged. So anyway, once the girls sit down and get settled into their little feet massage situation, um, <clears throat> they start talking about Toronto and more specifically the, the last dinner that they had where Kenya was, well, you know, Portia said, I feel like she was really trying to start something. She was getting at something, you know, she was talking about somebody's man cheating. And, you know, naturally I was like, okay, she talking about me. But as she kept going on and she kept looking over at you and she was looking, I was like, okay, this is not about me. And Tanya was just like, yeah. She just kept looking over at me like I'm talking about you. Yeah, she just kept saying the girl is so beautiful. Every time she would talk, it was a beautiful girl. Kenya wanted to drive home to Tanya that, you know, her man was out there cheating or um, potentially cheating with some very pretty woman. But Tanya's whole thing was just like, what? He can't talk to a beautiful woman? It's a whole bunch of them out here in Atlanta. And it is. It's some very pretty women out here. You know? So that's not nothing that she gonna, you know, get her dander up for. She really didn't feel like that was cheating. I don't think like that's cheating either. Now, they did show the little clip of um, the girl talking to Cynthia and Kenya. And she was just like, you know, your boy, Paul. You know, she couldn't wait to tell him, you know, she was, she was, he was, you know, buying me a drink and he didn't want me to leave and all of this. Again, this is all very much hearsay. Nothing to really, I mean, you know, it's, I was just like, oh God. So while they're sitting there talking about it, Marlo was like, well, Candy, what do you think? Do you think that's cheating? And Candy was just like, well, what I think is, <laughs> you know, Candy don't really want to say anything. I guess because maybe she felt like Paul potentially was cheating. But Candy tells us that Cynthia told her that the cookie ladies, I was just like, this is so fucking high school and juvenile, okay? For the complex seasons that they've had in the past, this season is so just so elementary. But, okay. Marlo warns Tanya, though. If Kenya's sniffing around, she knows something. Okay? And Tanya was like, well, maybe I know something, too. And they were like, <gasps> what? Like, you really know something? Child. So, evidently, when um, Tanya and Paul were leaving Toronto, Kenya called her and told her that she left something at the hotel and could Tanya please pick it up and bring it back to the States for her. And Tanya said, absolutely, I can do that. Okay. And when we went there, you know, I'm bringing something over the border. So of course I'm going to check inside. And inside was a wig. And I say, first the fuck off. You guys told me it was a fucking dildo. Who put that in my comments? I mean, I honestly thought that that's what it was. And it turns out that it's a fucking wig. And we all are excited about the fact that, first of all, you knew that Kenya had on a wig, Marlo, because you mentioned it at the dinner. Even if Kenya didn't mention, I mean, didn't confirm or whatever, you knew it was a wig. Kenya knew it was a wig. And anyway, who cares? Everybody knows Kenya has a lot of hair, okay? So if she decides to wear a wig one time like anybody else does, I am really failing to see where the drama is in this. Okay? But you know, Marlo was like, I knew it! I knew she had on a wig! I was just like... What? I mean, really? I mean, really? I am just really floored that that was actually a thing on the show. But it was, you guys. And you would think that Tanya had, like, the best gossip. Basically, like, she had caught... Uh, Mark in the bed with like, you know, one of the girls from Married to Medicine or something. I was just like, I am, this is stupid. I was immediately annoyed. Let's jump over to <laughs> the bone carrier Candy. She's meeting Cynthia and um, um, uh, Kenya over at 10th and Piedmont. All right. Actually, a pretty good voice. I used to go there to see they used to have a really good, um, um, uh, what's it called? I don't even want to call it the wrong word. You know, it would be the the, the cross dressers would would perform there and sing and dance and everything. It was really good. What? Why is my mind drawing a blank? Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, 
they're going to sit down and have lunch. But I'm telling you, Candy's only purpose on the show this season, and I'm not mad, you know, because, I mean, this is what she's been relegated to. Ain't no Cherie there, so I guess this is what we got to do. But she is always going to be run till that. I'm so fucking sick of Candy, you know? But, I mean, it's going to come out, but let the shit just come out sometime. I mean, that Candy can't wait to get somewhere to tell on, on what happened. So I just hope that these girls know from now on anything that you say around Candy is definitely the very next time she's with that person, she telling. So she tells them about them going to Jeju Spa and they went to get their toes um, um, massaged and that Portia had brought up that Kenya was directing her conversation about somebody's man cheating to Tanya. Kenya was like, no, I didn't. And Kenya was just like, yes, you did. <laughs> okay. Yes, you did, Kenya. Stop it. Before we can get anywhere, Cynthia tells the producers, you know, in her her one-on-one, -on -one, she tells them that she went on ahead and sat down with uh, Tanya because once Kenya was coming with that bullshit, like Cynthia didn't want to get caught up in acting like she knew something about Paul and Tanya and um, all of that. But Tanya was just like, whatever, like she is not going to break down my beautiful house of love, okay, over some damn gossip. So, Tanya doesn't seem to be too worried about it, but whatever. So, Candy tells Kenya that she told everybody that there was a wig in the bag. I said, oh, Candy, you left out the charger, too. Okay, and you guys, I can't with this wig situation. I can't even go on and on about that because it's stupid. Okay, and um, Kenya goes, well, you know, I can't believe that she would do that because, you know, we, we bonded in the room. They were talking about IVF and Candy was like, you were so easily talking about her egg. And Kenya was just like, what? All right, I was just like, so Kenya gets very offended about the fact that Tanya, you know, even though she seemed very receptive to the talk at one time, now she's sitting there telling the girls, you know, that how dare Kenya for prying into her IVF or, you know, trying to have a baby and whatever. And I was just like, it wasn't that big of a deal. Tanya didn't seem like she was all that offended. She was just kind of making a point. Okay, Kenya is getting with this false outrage. I was just like, I understand. They have got to give you guys something to watch for these next six, seven episodes. But it is just so stupid. Okay? Oh, oh you know, she has really opened up, you know, the shade queen. You know, she don't know what she got coming in. Oh, I was just like, so what are you about to do? Tear apart her relationship because of this? This is really what we talking about, like somebody said on Twitter. Recording and fucking wigs. This is what this season has been about. This, this is stupid, you guys. You guys should be offended that, that this is what we... And that Kenya now, she has got fire in her eyes. She's about to come after Tanya full force. I guess she's going to, you know, turn away from uh, the Nene shit. And now she's about to come on the... I was just like, oh, this is just dumb. Oh, such a dumb episode, you guys. Anyway, later on, we see the girls. They are going to meet up with Eva and her family to celebrate, you know, Marley Ray's new last name, okay? Um, and it was nice to see everybody had bought their kids, you know? And um, yeah, we're celebrating all around. Eva's still very emotional and all of that, but she hasn't been around for all of this drama that's been going on, okay? So after... Um, Everybody sits down to their pizza. Um, she sits down with Candy and uh, 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 who else was there? Cynthia and uh, Tanya. And um, they're getting her caught up on all the dramas. So, Candy, did you deliver my package? Yes, I did. And she was very upset about you telling everybody about her wig. And Tanya just can't understand why Kenya would be upset about that. Michael's sitting across from her. And, you know, he's a lawyer, so he should have a logical mind. Michael, let me ask you. So, if you were going over over the border and somebody wanted you to bring a package over for them, wouldn't you check inside? And uh, Michael says, yeah, I probably would. I probably would just to be nosy. <laughs> I mean, you trusted me enough to come get it if shit wasn't stapled clothes, you know. But I still need to know what I'm bringing over. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. Cynthia says, well, I don't think she was very upset about the fact that, um, you know, 
you looked in and saw that it was a wig, she was more upset about the fact that you told all of the girls. And Tanya was just like, well, I had no intentions of saying anything. I was just going to give Candy the package. But after she started talking about my man and my relationship, then that's when she decided to be petty. And Eva was just like, ah, oh, Tanya, girl, you have, to, you have decided to join the petty posse, okay? And Tanya was like, why not? I said, you might as well. Even though you about to bring on a whole bunch of extra drama from Kenya, okay? But maybe Tanya's up for it. I mean, they still got, like I said, seven episodes ago. So, I mean, I guess that's what they're going to have to do to make it entertaining for y'all. But to me, y'all, that whole part was just dumb. Let's talk about Portia. Portia goes to see her sister and her grand, and her, not her granny, her mama. Okay, Mother Diane. And uh, she's talking about Toronto, okay, and how the superintendent, that is Dennis, came to um, repropose to her. Mama Diane was like, so what, what does this mean? And uh, Portia's just like, well, what this mean is we are re-engaged. Lauren ain't really feeling it. I mean, I hope that, you know, after the excitement of him coming and showing up and doing all that is done, that you guys are really going to work on this relationship. I mean, it's all fun and games till a nigga go and sleep with some damn body. Like Portia said, they are definitely engaged. And Dennis actually wants to sit and talk to you guys. Now, what do you guys think about this kind of approach. I have to really wonder if this was something for just for TV. Um, or, you know, because when you, when you have a problem in your relationship, the relationship really is with you too, right? You and your significant other. So you involve in every side of your family into this. I really hope it's for TV. Okay, but see where they started is they involved their family from the beginning too, too much. Okay, this is my fucking business. Okay, and what have I told you guys so many times that just like what has happened here, um, when shit goes wrong in your relationship, even though there's no way for her to avoid it because she's on a TV show, so everybody knows it's on social media and everything, but um, in the regular, <laughs> regular, regular real world, you don't need to tell your family all the bad shit that goes on unless it gets to that point where you really got to start making some for real decisions on whether or not you're going to stay there. Because I've told you guys plenty of times, you the one in love with the nigga, not them. All right? So when you because of your undying love, finally get over whatever the problem is. Your family has not. So now you have involved them so many times and there's so much drama because you got to not only forgive him, but you also got to be explaining to them why you forgave him. Uh-uh. Okay? So when she said that he want to sit down and talk to him, I was just like, mm. You know, I mean, I guess it is times when men will talk to the mother on the phone or something or in person just be like you know I, I apologize but this whole display in front of the family and having the dinner and, and everybody's I was just like this is some bullshit <laughs> okay and if we starting off like this we ain't even got married okay it ain't no still no true real obligations there yes they've had a baby but you guys know like I know that Babies don't obligate people to each other. It should. It's supposed to, but it doesn't. You know, so I was just like, oh. <laughs> Lauren is the maddest, though, because Lauren has been in these same shoes as Portia. Her man cheated on her when she was pregnant. It was something that she wasn't able to get over and something that eventually her and the man broke up. So... It's a lot to have to deal with without you having to just, I mean, you know, you already trying to fix your relationship and now you got to be coddling to your family too. It's too much. It's too much. Okay. But for the show's sake. Um, so the day that um, Mama Diane and um, Lauren are going to come over to the house, you know, for Dennis to talk to him, you know, he's a little nervous, but Portia was just like, this is your show, whatever you want to do. Okay. He invited his mother as well. And again, I'm just like, now, why is your mom coming? Not that she doesn't deserve an explanation, but that's something that you guys should have talked. See, too much. Motherfuckers, this is just too much in the business. But whatever. When Mama Diane and, and Lauren get there and um, his mother, it starts off pleasant enough. You know, it seems like 
whatever dramas that the families, the two families had back then, at least the mothers get along and, you know, we, we all together for the love of this little baby and wanting this relationship to get going. But um, I just kind of had a smirk on my face. So they get started with the conversation, okay? Dennis says, you know, it's it's been, been hard these last two months. And Lauren was like, two months, okay? It feels like it was longer than that, okay? A year at least. And, the, and the, his mother was like, you're right. It has been definitely longer than two months. You guys had a whole fucking last season. You guys, well, not last season, but you know, there was some drama last season. And then after y'all wedding special, the shit fell apart. So it's definitely been more than two, <laughs> two months. I just feel like, even though people will say he doesn't owe it to anybody, no, you don't owe the expla explanation to anybody. That's why I would have been like, fuck it. I'm not talking to you guys. But if you're going to do it, then you just need to be 100% truthful. Two months. Okay. I was um selfish. No, you was cheating. Okay. It was longer than two months. They get into this whole conversation about he felt a certain kind of way because the family didn't re... Okay, Diane and Lauren didn't reach out to him to see how he was feeling. And then Portia said, well, your mom didn't reach out to me to see how I was feeling. All of this would be very nice if they decided to do it, but you have got to understand why they wouldn't. First of all, like... Dennis's mom said she didn't feel like it was really her place. Now, her son and fucked up. My duty is to make sure that my son knows what the fuck he did wrong. Okay? I can't. I mean, you know, unless we have that relationship where we're so close that I am going to call you because, I mean, if some shit like this had gone down, my mother-in-law would call me, but this is 22 years in the fucking making. Okay? Y'all just getting together and it ain't been even a year or two yet and y'all wanting all this family and everybody. It's just like too much okay but that's what's been the problem with dennis and porsche's relationship like everybody has said they rushed into it they are dealing with shit that people that have only been together a year really shouldn't have i mean you guys have been had a baby about to get married had infidelity you know the family is hurt and all of this and everybody trying to live make sure they're gonna live here and who you guys should be enjoying each other right now. Instead, you have taken on a whole full, full family and all the problems and shit and challenges that come with it. So, you know, they were all in their feelings about who didn't call. and they, No, I don't expect my man's family to call me and he shouldn't expect my family to call him. Okay? In the grand scheme of things, if that's what they choose to do, fine. But you shouldn't be hurt if they didn't. I got so tired of this conversation, but you know, at the end of the day, all Portia wanted him to do was to come clean to assure her family that he was not going to hurt him anymore. And if that's what it took, then fine. I'm really hoping that as everybody gets on track and you know, this relationship gets to going in the positive direction that they don't feel like they have to go to their family every time that, you know, some shit goes down. And I'm talking about to the point where even if he cheats again or if she cheats or if there's an infidelity or whatever, okay? Um, even though we would know about it because it, it would end up on the social media. But I'm talking about in regular real life. Y'all take this example of what they're going through and don't do it in your relationship. <laughs> Do not do this, you guys. I'm not saying all the time that you can't involve your family, but most times this is some shit that you guys need to deal with on your own. All right, you guys, that is it. Let me get off of here. I still got to do power. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rock Stars. Bye.